My two guests today played together on the Los Angeles Rams back in the 1980s. One was an offensive tackle supreme who actually took a few years to become a starter. Folks, he played his entire 20-year career with the Rams. The other, a running back who broke rushing records as a rookie sensation, and he would go on to star for three more teams in his 11 years in the league. They took different paths, but they reunited as inductees right here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Folks, I welcome Mr. Jackie Slater and Eric Dickerson. Good to see you guys. Good fellas. to see you, Jackie. Anyway, hey, now, baby. so you were kind of a mentor for ED. Now, your boy's got these little bony basketball legs, but is this what you told him to come show off his, <laughs> no. uh, his athletic legs? Is that you the know, I was, t I was told by one right. of the producers that right. to wear a jacket, right. to wear a tie, right. and Eric comes like he's getting ready to go play golf. Well, well when you got a body so like that, you can wear it, though, yeah, right? Yeah, I guess you got a point. Now, hold it, can, I, can, can I defend myself? <laughs> <laughs> so I asked them what to wear. They said, just come casual. Right, right. right. Like, I was, I'm going to the golf course when I leave here, so I am going to play golf. So no that's good. why I came like this. Hey, so Jackie, I've been working out hard because I saw him a few years ago in tights. And the brother looked good in tights. tights. In tights, Jackie, can you believe that? How did you do, me? You know what? I'll never forget. It was my, my rookie season, and I show up for mini camp. You know, and, you know, the Rams had a, a seasoned offensive line. And the guy that was, you know, kind of the most outspoken guy was Jackie Slater. Jackie Slater outspoken? Spoken? I know. I know. It's hard, it's hard to believe, you know. But he was kind of outspoken, especially to us rookies. Okay. You know, because he introduced, hi, I'm Jackie Slater. How you going? What's your name, young man? I said, I'm Eric Dickerson. And all, I mean, all this guy, I won't get me in another guy, Otis Grant. There was a couple of guys. Henry Ellett was saying, hey, man, you met the guy Jackie Slater? I'm like, I'm like yeah. He said, man, he kind of, woo. You know? <laughs> you know, are you guy? Are you guy? Are you, are you young man? Are you married? You got a girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't ask me yeah. that. Oh, yes. You? You, know, you know, you need to get married. You need to get married and stuff. <laughs> so you were trying to find out what about the youngsters and asking those well, you questions. Know, you always want to make guys feel comfortable when you come to a team. Ask him you. if he had a girlfriend or what he's <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that. That was the first it thing was, I, asked him. I probably was a little bit curious about him because we had just drafted him with the second pick in the draft. Mm. And so I'm, I'm expecting a very dynamic personality, a dynamic athlete and everything. And the first <laughs> couple of days of practice, he was just just kind of meandering around. So why were you meandering? Were you trying to get a feel for things? No, or see, and they always thought when I was, especially when I was in practice running the football, that I was like loafing, like I wasn't running fast. I don't, I don't run real. Dun, 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 dun. Right, right, right. You know, right. I just kind of do it smooth. I'm running yeah, fast. I said, yeah. I'll tell you what, coach. I said, get out here and try to catch me, and you'll see how fast I'm running. <laughs> did you and say that, that to him? Yeah, and you know yeah. what? We, I, I felt the same way coach did. I mean, I, I, I think, where, where's the effort here? And then we played, we started playing the games, and I think the first game he played in and we ran that play, we went back and looked at it on film. It was productive in the game, and you saw the production 10, 15, 20 yards, or whatever it was. But when you went back and looked at the film, you saw a guy that was moving at a much higher rate of speed mm. than everybody else around him. Looking like a gazelle, though, taking those nice yeah, yeah. loping steps. Almost effortless. Not, not a whole bunch of grunting. And, and <laughs> that's not, <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm used to guys grunting and making noises, but you never saw it, never heard it. If you wouldn't mind setting the stage for those who may not know a lot about you, talk about your upbringing. Both of you guys, Southern guys. In a nutshell, how would you describe your upbringing? What was it like? Uh, well, for me, I'm from a small town in Texas, Sigley, Texas. Um, I was raised by my great, great aunt and her husband, Carrie Dickerson. I was legally adopted by them. Uh, church going people. I mean, I had to go to church every Sunday. My dad and mom, they didn't really care for sports. They said, you know, more education and, uh, you know, get a job after. But I was fortunate enough to, uh, you know, play sports and was good at it. My dad had passed away when I was a junior. So my mom kind of saw my career. And she still in, she hated football. She said, hate why? She said, Eric, I hate that sport. She says, too, it's, it's going to cause you problems later. Because I was a good baseball player. She said, why don't you play baseball? I like baseball. Well, you know what reason I play football? To be honest with you, I liked it so much. Because the, girl the girls like the football player. You can wear the jersey. <laughs> see, see how you looking at me? See how you looking at me again? The girls like the football player. You wear your jerseys on Friday and Friday night lights and all that. Right. So that's why I like playing football. And so, you know. That's, Boy, that's the it. ladies motivate guys in so many ways. Jackie, your upbringing in Jackson, Mississippi. Well, I was born and raised in Jackson, Mississippi. I'm, I'm the oldest of five boys. And, you know, after my junior year in high school, I came home. My father, he had moved out. So I felt the weight of the world growing up. But my mom... And my great aunt in particular, they spent a lot of time encouraging me. And so I got into the sport. And then and Walter Payton and the head coach of Jackson State at that time, Bob Hill, came to my house, recruited me to come there, made me feel like I could be special. 
And I went there, and it kind of worked out the way they thought. So uh, that's been an pretty understatement. Good. It worked out pretty well. <laughs> yeah. We're going to step aside for a quick commercial break. So he had his mother's strong influence, and the other women, and the women because he looked good in the jersey. <laughs> that's more, that's more too. Back with more Jackie Slater and Eric Dickerson after this. Football fans certainly remember back in 1985, Eric Dickerson ran for a playoff record 248 yards and two scores. That against the Dallas Cowboys. Jackie Slater, a key blocker as always in that game, yet he's best known for preventing the Eagles' great rusher, Reggie White, from getting a sack in a 1989 playoff win. So Eric and Jackie, I guess you guys have got some great memories, but going against Reggie White and like, Give me some Jackie Slater stories. Uh, anytime you play with, with Jackie, I found this out as a rookie, you know, and he's blocking. If you got a guy, he's blocking. They would say, you know, help to tackle if you can. Stay if you're blocking. If you don't have a man, help to tackle. And if you would touch him on his hip, like lightly, just turn, I'm let you know I'm here. Oh, my gosh. Get back to him. Don't touch me. Don't put your hands on me. I'm like, okay. You're on his team. I'm on his team. Don't touch me. Okay, don't touch Jackie. I mean, <laughs> That's because they would bump me off my block. Like I said. Even a light touch, don't, though. Don't, this. Don't <laughs> touch me. So why against the likes of Reggie White? I mean, he was an absolute beast. And, when, and I say that in the most affectionate of terms. Yeah. He was, he was just an unbelievable player. I mean, he was big. He was fast. He was powerful. Uh, he was very, very motivated. He was probably the most intimidating player uh, of his air that no one wanted to deal with. You know, he and the likes of Bruce Smith, you don't want to deal with those guys. But then in the big game situations, you know that if you don't deal with them, you don't have a chance, Snowball's chance in Hades of winning a football game. In the final 60 seconds of this segment, talk about that year when Eric broke the 2,000-yard rushing mark, trying to become the second person behind O.J. Simpson who was living in L.A. and broadcasting in the whole nine yards. We talked about the 248 yards rushing in the playoff game and the two scores. How much did that fire you guys up knowing that E.D. was within striking distance? Oh, it was, uh, we, we knew it was a matter, I, I felt it was a matter of time. I had a vantage point that very few had. I remember standing on the sidelines as a youngster and watching O.J. run with the football. And just coming into the league, I'm thinking, man, this is O.J. Simpson. And you would just see the poetry in motion. You would see this guy just using the football field like an artist. He was just spectacular. I knew Eric by, by week seven. I knew it was special. And I knew we were, we were headed for some, some special times with him. But then after I got hurt, I got to stand there and watch this guy. And it was just a thing of beauty. It was just so special. And, and, and the vantage point was different from the standpoint of being a rookie looking at OJ, second year guy looking at OJ, and then being a veteran and thinking to myself, hey, this is, this is deja vu again. With, with a special running back doing very special things. And a you know? beautiful style of that. As we head to commercial break, when we come back, we're going to talk more about not only the game today and what their thoughts are, but what they're doing as well. Back here with two Hall of Famers, Jackie Slater and Eric Dickerson. By the way, you actually presented Eric yeah. at the Hall of Fame. But before we talk about that, you actually had a conversation with O.J. Simpson, letting him know when you were in high school his record was going to be gone. <laughs> Talk about that. Well, I was, uh, I was getting recruited by USC. Uh, that was my first visit to SC. Um, I was a big OJ fan, my favorite running back, my favorite player. So I, I see him before the, before the game, the Rose Bowl game, the day before. They're playing Michigan. And I asked some of the other recruits, recruits, I said, let's go and say something to OJ. They said, nah, and I said, come on, man. Nah, I'm like, I'm going to go say something to him. So I walked over, I said, how you doing, Mr. Simpson? My name is Eric Dickerson. I'm a running back from Sealy, Texas. He said, oh, OK. He said, SC recruiting? I said, yes, sir, they are. Um, and I said, I had 2,000 yards in high school. He said, okay. He said, and I told him, I said, I'd like to break your record one day. He said, okay, young man, well, good luck to you. <laughs> so, you know, lo and behold, I did break the record. But I always say this. I said that OJ did it in 14 games. I did it in 15 with one extra game to go. Just to show you how hard that is to get 2,000 yards. It's very difficult. Hey, let's spin it forward in terms of what you guys are doing today. Jackie Slater, I know you got Slater Enterprises. You still are closely associated with the game. Talk about what you're doing. Well, I, I, I'm, very, I'm one of the luckiest guys in the country right now. I, I, I played pro football for 20 years, and now at this particular stage of, of my life, I'm, I'm having a unique opportunity to do that as well. I, I get to come alongside uh, Victor Santa Cruz out at uh, 
uh, Azusa Pacific University. And then I also get the opportunity to, to uh, work with a lot of NFL offensive linemen from literally around the country. So Big names indeed. Go ahead. Yeah, I, and, I, and I enjoy that. I mean, it's, it's an honor. And you get the opportunity to physically work with them and, and talk to them and kind of mentor them. So these them guys are hungry to improve and try oh, to yeah. pick your brains. Oh, yeah. And, and it's, it's unfortunate, but in the offensive line right now, they've legislated an opportunity for young offensive linemen to grow and develop. And people just don't have the time to develop them. You don't get to develop them really at the college level because the NC2A, it, it mandates that you spend, them, spend less time with them football-wise so that they can focus you know, on graduating, more, more people graduating. So they don't get the time to pour into them there. And the offensive line, in my opinion, is one of the most technical positions that there is. You have to learn so many different things to be successful. John Madden says it all starts up front, period. My colleague Bill Cower says no matter how the game is tweaked and what they're legislating to make it more offensively oriented, the ground attack is still <laughs> the one, period. We're talking with two Hall of Famers. I want to get their thoughts about the journey that they have taken to get to this point and what the next is in their careers. That after this. In his you, you, Hall of Fame induction that. speech, Eric Dickerson recalled, quote, it was the ultimate feeling for me as a player that my guys felt that if they got me past the line of scrimmage, I would take care of the rest. And one key guy, clearly the NFC players, four-time NFC Offensive Lineman of the Year, that will be Jackie Slater. So, Eric, now, as a rookie, you're coming in. Jackie was, if you will, the pops. He was the father of the team. Yeah. And you allegedly said, and asked him how many times had he been to the Pro Bowl. He said none. And you said what? Well, I asked him, um, I said, Jackie, I said, how many times have you been all pro, play Pro Bowl, been, been Pro Bowl? He said, I've never been. I said, you're going to go now since I'm here. So was, what did you see in him that you knew that would be the case? Well, one thing was is that our offensive line was just, they, they could hold their blocks. And I told them, don't, you don't, have, just give me a split second. I don't need you to hold them a long time. Just get in their way and I'll take care of the rest. And, and that's what made us so good. And, and I saw that in Jackie. And Jackie was so committed, you know, to his position, you know, being the best you know, knocking guys off the ball of scrimmage, you know, and sometimes holding them, <laughs> which, which, hey, that's, that's part of the game if you don't get caught. And he was so good at it, I just, I just knew that, that he was the guy that I always wanted to try to run behind. So your reaction to this rookie? Well, I was thinking, well, this arrogant young man, what's he talking about? <laughs> How does he know? But, you know, I got to tell you, when he said that to me, he looked me right in my eye and he said that. From all that I've seen of you, work ethic, determination, commitment define what your career was all about. And so Eric comes in with prodigious talent, but everyone says his work ethic was second to none as well. Is that correct? I, I thought so. And I, I, when I, as I got to know him and as I got to watch how productive he was and how serious uh, he was during games, I mean, there, there was no intimidation ever. From the moment we started playing the games, he was never intimidated by it. The game never got too big for him. Mm -hmm. And I, I recognize that right away. A lot of young guys come in and all nervous and everything. And Eric was just quiet. He stayed within him. <laughs> he stayed within himself. Right. And he was in his element from the moment he got there when we got to the big time situation with all the people in the game being on the line. He was always so now, tight. Were you thinking about all the women in the stadium? <laughs> <laughs> or was this just part of your upbringing not to be overtaken by the moment? Well, sometimes I did glance in those stands. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I was always taught even if you're nervous or have some fear, don't show it. One thing I always felt is I felt God gave me a talent that was second to none. So it just gave me that much more confidence. And when we got to going, I mean, I'm gonna say it was when football was really, really fun. And you, know, and you, know, you know, the other really good thing about that is most offensive linemen don't want to pass block anyway. All we want to do is put our hand on the ground and do what we do naturally, which is come off straight ahead and knock people off the ball. And so to be in a situation where that was expected and was going to happen on a weekly basis, we, we played at a, at a very high comfort level, knowing that we were going to be doing things like that. Final 30 seconds in this segment. What was the biggest attitude adjustment for you, Jackie? Because you were a, in your words, a pass-rushing demon on the defense, uh, and you get switched to offense. Why 30 seconds? Well, I, I, I was, a, like you say, I was a pass-rusher uh, extraordinaire and a two-gapper supreme in my mind. I was <laughs> in your even, mind. Yeah, I Eric, I love that. Go ahead. I like that. And then all of a sudden, they switched me to the offensive line, and I, and I have to give uh, Melvin Pete and uh, 
Bob Hill a lot of credit. They saw something in me that I just couldn't envision at the time. I had a, a real tenacity, and I had a body to be a, a good offensive lineman, but a tenacity to be a good defensive lineman. And they saw that, and they put me over there where I could, where I could blossom. More with Jackie and ED after this. actually ask a player, your colleague, to introduce you at the Hall of Fame when so many people would have loved that opportunity, how did it come about? And I said, Jack, I said, if, if I go in, I said, I'd like you to present me. He said, Eric, really? I said, man, I, I would love you to present me. And uh, that's, how, that's how the conversation came up. And um, I got to even go past that when I, when I got in. Um, and he, was, he did a fantastic job. And I told him, I said, now you next. And he didn't believe it. He, he didn't believe it. I, I, I told him, I said, I said, you're going in, Jack, in your first ballot Hall of Fame. I guarantee you. And sure enough, he went in also. That was phenomenal. The journey for you, as you look back at it, both of you are at the ultimate in terms of the Hall of Fame, but the journey and what it means to you. Uh, it means a, it's a confirmation. It's a confirmation of, um, of what all, I think, parents and uh, grandparents and relatives um, have said to the kids around the country for years and years in living in this country is that uh, you know whatever it is that you decide you wanted to do then do everything uh, with all your might Eric Eric says that all the time do everything with all your might and work and that's physically and mentally and then ultimately you'll you'll be pleased if you if you're shooting for something that's a whole lot higher than maybe where you land and where you land is going to be a whole lot higher than probably where you started, and so I'm I'm just thankful that I was that I had that opportunity. Well, I'll, I'll say this uh, about the hall. First of all, I got to tell a quick story. Matter of fact, uh, I was in my second season, and uh, we were at the Pro Bowl with Ricky Jackson. I'm sitting on the wall out there. We're sitting there talking, and he said, Eric, he said, man, he said, Eric, you're a great player, man. He said, we tried to intimidate you, you know, the Saints said we couldn't intimidate you. He said, man, he said, you won't go in the Hall of Fame if you keep playing like that, and. I'm sitting there waiting. I'm like, okay, what's the Hall of Fame? Because I didn't know. So I'm like, and we finished. I said, Jackie, I said, I'm going to say, Ricky, what's the Hall of Fame? I got to ask. He said, man, you don't know what the Hall of Fame is? I'm like, no, what is it? He said, that's why the greatest players go that ever played the game. I say, they go where? He says, they get you, you have a bus. I'm like, like a bus you drive? He said, no, boy, not no bus you drive. He said, like, a, I'm like, oh, he's explaining. I'm like, oh, okay. So that, that made it, you know, it just, it's mm. funny when I think about it. But, but for me, um, Jackie said it best that what I, my, my dad always had a saying to me when I was a kid, son, all that you do, do what you might. Things done by halves are never done right. And uh, I believe that wholeheartedly. Um, it's a journey that I'm thankful to have. I'm, I'm, I was very pleased in my career. Uh, you always maybe wish things would have came out different, but it just was not like that. Um, I was always a stand-up guy. You know, I, I tell you, you might not like it, what I say, but it's just my truth, and I believe it's the truth, um, even by myself and as a player. Um, and I just, I love football when I played it. I mean, I, I, it was nothing that I loved more. I can remember um, playing as a kid. And, and if, you know, I, I was fast and it just like, the wind would just not hit me fast enough. And, and I look back at such a kid sport, it's still a kid sport and I love it. And I thank God that I had a chance to play and play at a high level and he gave me this talent. Can't you and, sense his passion? Yeah, yeah gave you know, me this that's, that's what we appreciate about yeah, and, talent. and what I appreciate about you, final 20 seconds, your legacy being passed along to your son, Matthew Slater, playing with the Patriots and embodying everything that you were and are. Well, thank you, James. I'm very proud of Matthew. Very, very, very proud of him. He's worked real hard and he's, he's stretched the, the God-given ability that he has as far as he possibly can. And he, and he really understands what it means to show up and give a man a day's work. And, and then you let the chips fall where they may from there. You can't control the decisions that people make to keep you on the team or to start you or to play you or when they decide to play you. But what you can control is your effort and excellence, trying to do things right all the time on the field. And, that, and that's, that's what I did, and I think that's what he's trying to do as well. Jackie Slater, of course, was a Bart Starr Award winner. His son was. I got a chance to present the award to his son through him at the uh, Super Bowl prayer breakfast last year. I just wanted to see the big fella cry. We got one tear, <laughs> one tear. Hey, Eric. And my allergies, man. <laughs> no, that's what he said, Eric. His I allergies, yeah, exactly his up. allergies were bothering him. Exactly Jackie up. Slater, Eric Dickerson, Hall of Famer Supreme, Friends Supreme. Thank you so very much. 
We'll see you next week on another edition of the James Brown Show.